Joining me is senior political reporter Trudy McIntosh. Trudy McIntosh, thank you so much for joining me. This story gets wilder and worse. I mean, it's just shocking, uh, particularly for the Liberals. But what stunned me was leader Peter Dutton today trying to brush it off and brush it off just before Morrison admitted he had made a, some sort of mistake. Mm. Does Dutton truly think that this is just a storm in a teacup, do you think? I think Peter Dutton knew today he had to play essentially a dead bat, that today's gone for the opposition, that there was going to be so many questions regarding who knew what and when inside the former Morrison government. Ministers are essentially tearing themselves apart over this matter. What you hear publicly from people is just the tip of the iceberg about the red-hot anger. Up until this morning, we hadn't really heard publicly from a lot of uh, former senior Liberals. You'd heard a lot of venting coming out of nationals, including the current leader, David Littleproud. But today, you've seen that shatter with uh, in the form of Karen Andrews, someone who had shared her responsibilities as Home Affairs Minister, but had no idea until this was published today. She was incredibly angry about this. And this is just the start, as people like her call for Mr Morrison to leave Parliament entirely. You very rarely see that sort of blue-on-blue -blue action, but we've seen it unfold today. Well, as you say, they've all kept very quiet. Any briefing that's been done has been, you know, don't quote me directly. Is he Josh Frydenberg saying he didn't know, but not going public with it. Christian Porter apparently briefing that he didn't know uh, how the template that he'd done for uh, the health minister uh, was then used by someone in Dutton's office by, uh, to do all the other appointments as well. A lot of people saying privately what they think, not publicly. Privately, what are senior Liberal MPs saying? Well, they're very frustrated that this was kept um, under wraps, that Mr Morrison didn't even have the courtesy to tell them that they were sharing these responsibilities. And the interesting point that we heard uh, revealed today by the Prime Minister uh, when he was asked is that there was no end date to these powers, Andrew, that... Up until the election day, Scott Morrison still held these five roles. So were the Morrison government to have been re-elected, there was no guarantee that these powers would have actually ceased. So still plenty to unfold here on the timeframes. And Mr Morrison's given a pretty lengthy explanation, but there's still a lot to really unpack in the days ahead. Yes, I don't think the explanation uh, explained much at all. Um, now, it is true that some nationals did know last year that Morrison had, for instance, made himself the second resources minister, killed off a gas project that the uh, Nationals Minister Keith Pitt actually supported. They said nothing publicly. Greg Hunt said nothing publicly. How many Liberals also knew what was going on and said nothing? You're rare to find one who's actually willing to say that they did know. You're getting a lot of people come out today and saying the opposite, that I had no idea, no one had told me. And this includes some of the most... Uh, central people within the Morrison government during the last three years, that Matthias Cormann was not told, given he was the leader of the government in the Senate at the time, an incredibly powerful figure, that Josh Frydenberg also has now made it clear that he did not know either. Those two spent nights together at the lodge, Andrew, bunking in at the height of the COVID pandemic, joking, laughing, saying that they were essentially best of friends, and yet at the time, Scott Morrison was keeping a pretty big secret that he also had his hands on that key treasury role. It's just absolutely extraordinary. Um, the Governor-General, David Hurley, I think is getting away with a bit here. Uh, the Prime Minister seems very keen to protect him from criticism for not just appointing Morrison as the second minister of at least five other ministries. Now, he might say, look, uh, you know, uh, Governor-General has to do uh, follow the advice of the, the government of the day. But he kept it mm. secret. He helped Keep it secret. And the Governor-General, I think, even went more, uh, went even further by claiming, and in my opinion, falsely, that such appointments, these secret appointments to uh, be a second minister when there's already another minister, they were not unusual. I think they were highly unusual. Why do you think the Labor Prime Minister is protecting him? Well, it just seems like he wants to put a lot of the blame here on his predecessor, that he wants the political fallout to lie squarely with Scott Morrison and former members of his cabinet. He was being asked several times today, the Prime Minister, 
Do you have confidence in David Hurley? Do you believe he always um, acted with the best interest? Should he have been more transparent? On every occasion today, the Prime Minister has sidestepped the question and said that this should be something that the questions are answered by Scott Morrison and those around him. I think there is still real questions to answer by the Governor-General. We were given a statement, three or four paragraphs yesterday, by a spokesman for the Governor-General, but I put additional questions then back to the Governor-General's office. Can you lay out the timelines on which these administrative orders were ticked off on? Why didn't you insist that they were made public through a gazetting process? The Governor-General's role, yes, is to accept advice on by the Prime Minister, but he also has a role to advise and counsel Prime Ministers. That is part of his function. It's not clear at this stage whether at any time Mr Hurley advised the then Prime Minister that he should, in the interest of transparency, make these public. We haven't seen a full and frank um, assessment be laid out by the Governor-General. Yes, there's been a small statement, but there's still plenty of unanswered questions. Oh, yes, this is going to roll and roll. There is just so much to unpack here. And I just wonder how Scott Morrison can show his face in the Liberal Party room again. I don't know that we'll be waiting long for him to resign and retire. Trudy McIntosh, you've been all over it. If people want to follow the details of this unfolding story, they would do very well to follow your reports. You've been all over this. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you.